is calling, get on board. The destination's heaven, safe on that crystal shore. We'll meet our blessed Savior and loved ones gone before. We'll spend all eternity, thank God I'm going home.
Amen. Worship God. We have a trio coming to sing at this time. Let's praise him. Good to see Sister Bailey back with us. She had surgery. Everything's going well with her. Is that right? God was with her. She had cancer. And they said he got it all. Thank God for that. Amen. So give the Lord a hand for that. God's still answering prayer. Don't let the devil fool you. He's a liar. God still answers prayer. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> Worship God as they sing.
around you there's no happiness there's no reason for living life will give you a broken dream full of sorrow and fear turn around you don't look back again and face the new
angels are singing. I've come too far to look back. Oh, I've come too far to look back. Oh, I've been up through the valleys. I've climbed mountains, cross rivers, and desert places. passing by. Hallelujah. You can receive what you need from the Lord this morning. Praise God. All you got to do is receive it and believe it. Accept it in the name of Christ. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. There is nothing behind me. Thank you, Jesus. All the treasures I give Yes, God, raise your hands love. and praise Him all over the building. Have all faded from view. Thank God. There's a new day Hallelujah. ahead for me. Praise Him. All my heartache Thank is you, Jesus. over. Thank you, Jesus. For I left it at Calvary. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody lay Where my new life began. I've come too far to look back. My feet have walked through the valleys. I've climbed mountains across the rivers. And desert places I give us Lift up your hands and praise God this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God for victory. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You came to church expecting... You can get what you need. The answer is yours. The devil's a liar. 
You'll never believe God without a fight. Why do you think President Trump is having a hard time? I'm going to tell you why. Because there's two spirits in this world. There's a spirit of righteousness and a spirit of weakness. And that spirit of weakness has been aroused. They don't want righteousness. But righteousness will prevail. The earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters trouble the sea. Touch her, Lord. Deliver her right now. I rebuke it. Patakama Shandi. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I rebuke it in the Masandai. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We as God's people are in battle. There's a war going on. And Trump probably doesn't even know God or doesn't know Jesus. He doesn't know much about God because he's probably never seen anything or told anything much about God. But God can use him for this nation. And wickedness is prevailing. We're in a spiritual war. The, the devil wants to take over the earth. But God said in Psalm 24 and 1, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. He hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully. We stand in the hill of the Lord. We stand in the presence of God. There's war going on, but I've got news for the devil. I know the end. I read the end of the book. And when I got down to the end in the book of Revelation, that old devil was dealt with. He's cast in the bottomless pit for a thousand years, and he'll be shut up. And there will be a thousand year reign on this earth. I was at the radio station yesterday. I'd taken some CDs, and there was a man in there when I got there, and he was, looked like he was going to go on the air live. And I was taking four CDs. I take for four weeks ahead of time. They'll start playing Monday because we run out uh, for four weeks prior. And he let me in. I, he was in the studio. I couldn't get in the other door, come through the studio to get in. And Pyre just went off. Don't you know I'm God? Don't you know I never change? Don't you know I win? I've never lost. I've never failed. I'm perfect in all my ways. I made you as my creation. You're mine. You're my responsibility. And I told you, I'll meet you. I'll lay my hand upon you. I'll put my spirit within you. And you shall walk in my love. You shall live in my glory. You shall stand in my power. For I'm the Lord. I'm the Lord. I'm the Lord. Saith the Lord. Raise up your hands and praise him. I had walked into the studio and th this man was there. He had his Bible it, where, the, where they speak in the studio and we've got a control room there and I had to go another way to get in the control room to take my CDs and, and I, I came in. I didn't know him and I was in there talking to the, to the gentleman who's uh, there at the station at the time and he comes in there and he starts a, congregate, a conversation with me and he starts uh, trying to get me involved in, in a debate. And he starts talking about the rapture. He said, the rapture's wrong. I said, listen, I, I, I don't believe that. Don't, don't tell me that. I, I don't believe that. I believe in the rapture. I believe there's two separate comings of Jesus. First to get the church and then at the second advent, he's coming to judge the world. And, and he said, I want to talk to you. You're wrong. I said, listen, I'm not going to change you and you're not going to change me. I don't want to debate you. I don't believe in debating over scripture. Now, I, you can have a lot of falling out over revelation and over scripture and you can make enemies because somebody doesn't agree with you. They have a right to their own individuality to see things the way they want to. You can't make anybody believe like you, but you've got to stand for what you believe to be right. 
And I believe in a rapture. I believe the rapture will take place prior to the tribulation period. There'll be seven years of tribulation. We're going to be with the Lord and we're going to be at the marriage supper of the Lamb. There's going to be a, a world here like the world's never known and it's working up to it right now. All of this. Now, if I'm going to bust up your theology, it's okay. Don't get mad at me. I do not believe the Antichrist will rule the whole world. I don't believe that. Preachers are preaching that. Well, that's all right. I don't fall out with them because revelation is not easy to interpret. I believe according to what I read, he'll have his kingdom ruled by 10 toes, two, uh, 10 horns that he'll rule. That'll be it, but he'll have influence now. He'll rule in his kingdom and where he is, he'll be God. But he won't be God over the whole world. If you believe that, don't fall out with me. Keep believing if you want to. I'm telling you, I'm preaching now and I'm telling you how I believe it. I believe that he will rule and I believe there'll be kings of the earth that will rule and he calls the kings of the earth together with him to go to Armageddon. Well, if he was king over the whole earth, why would he have to get those kings to agree with him? And he works miracles through his false prophet to get them to come and fight at Armageddon. That means he don't rule the whole world. He rules 10 toes, but he's powerful. But everything's working up to the rapture. When you see these streets and all of these people, they want gay marriage, they want um, uh, these things that are going on, uh, same sex. They, they want uh, the uh, gender problem, a, a man supposed to be a woman, a woman. All of that's a mess. It's all leading up to the coming of the Lord. I believe the rapture could happen before I get to the parsonage. It may not. I'm not going to argue with you when it'll take place. You don't know it. I don't know it, but I believe it will. And I'm ready if it does. I've got my garments on, I've got my armor on, I'm fighting the battle, I'm standing the test, and I'm looking forward to the coming of the Lord. I don't believe we ought to argue over the Bible. We can get mad at each other. That's not God's will. But there's one thing you've got to know. Jesus is coming. And you've got to know he hasn't announced the date that he's coming. He did tell us about the signs of the time and the season he would come. Some say he's going to come in the first of tribulation. I believe that. Don't fall out with me. If you believe middle, that's you and God. If you believe post, he's just coming one time, that's you and God. But what I read and what I study, I don't believe we'll go through tribulation. He's not called us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through Jesus Christ. And there's many scriptures, but we can get carried away in things until we miss the message. The message is stay on fire for God. Be looking for Jesus to come. He's got to come because he's the only one can straighten it out. They're trying to get into our nation. Have you ever seen such a fight over immigration? You know why that's true? Because the devil don't want standards. He don't want walls. He don't want barriers. The United States has been perfect in God's eyes to the extent that we are a land of liberty and freedom. We're a land of religious worship, freedom. You go to some of these third world countries and they'll cut your head off if you don't worship their God. God never forces anybody to serve him. We serve him because we want to serve him. We serve him because he shows us he's the way and he's the truth and the life. I serve him because one day in 1959, he got a hold of me as a boy in Wyandotte, Michigan and took me to an old storefront building where they're having church and saved my soul. He sanctified me and baptized me in the Holy Ghost. He put his word in my heart. He told me how to live and he put a standard around my life. The devil cannot get to me. I am untouchable because he's got to come through Jesus. I'm going to be ready when the rapture takes place. But all of this chaos, never has there been a time where people hate righteousness as much as they do now. They don't want any laws. If we didn't have any laws, you couldn't get home. You'd be killed on the highway. You've got to have laws to survive. God gave us a law. What is it? It's found from Genesis to Revelation in the word of God. If we'll live by that word, we will be ready. So I told the man, I said, I'm not going to argue. He made him mad because I wouldn't argue with him. I just walked out. I said, you're not going to change me because I've been through this before. 
My daddy's a good man. I believe he went to heaven just as sure as I'm standing here. But he didn't believe But Jesus was coming back one time and that was at the end. I couldn't convince him. Well, so be it. I believe he will. And I'd rather believe he could come any time than believe he might come later because I might not have as good a commitment. But if I know he could come any day now, I'm going to keep my robes washed in the blood of the Lamb. I'm going to keep them unspotted. I'm going to do everything that I can to be ready. I'm telling you, as your pastor, as a man that's in the Word and studied it all of my life, I've went through it. I've went through things, and God showed me the truth. I know the truth. I'm not deterring from it. I believe Jesus could come today. Don't doubt my coming. Realize when I left, I prepared those early disciples that I would come again. As sure as I came to die on a cross and purge your sins and wash you in my blood, I'm coming after my church, a church without spot and without wrinkle. Get ready. The time is short. Things will come to pass swiftly. For I will do a quick work. You're mine. I hold you in the hollow of my hand. I will defend you. I'll defend my cause. I'll defend my way, saith the Lord. Now these folks that are trying to get in and cause all of this chaos, there'll be a peace for a while. God will give maybe the United States a little more time to pray and get right with him. But in the meanwhile, the the real is going to happen and the real is there's going to be wrath on this world. The real is Jesus is not happy with what's going along. Uh, I, I preached the other night on striving against God. Now there's a difference in striving against God and being a sinner. A sinner is a sinner by nature. We're all born in sin, shaping in iniquity. That's why Jesus died. He died to loose us and set us free by his power. We're free from sin. We're washed in the blood. We're claimed by the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're sinners. That Jesus died for sinners. He loves sinners. But he won't put up with those that strive against him. Those that demand that God is not real. Those that demand that you don't have to live by the Bible. Those that say the Bible has no power. That's striving against God. And it's happening bad in our nation. You used to see it in Europe. It was all over Europe. But it's here now. Well, why is it here? The signs of the time. Lawlessness. People don't respect the law. Judges don't respect the law. They make their own laws. But there is a law. There is a law. From Genesis to Revelation, no judge can change it. Congress can't change it. Ungodly politicians can't change it. It is an eternal law. At the end, Jesus is going to be standing and all rebellion's going to be under his feet. Hell's going to be full of rebellion. Heaven's going to be full of righteousness. I'm on my way to heaven and my journey gets sweeter every day. I've got to sharpen myself. I've got to make myself get before God's mirror. I've got to examine myself. The Bible said in 2 Corinthians 13 and 5, examine yourselves whether you be in the faith prove your own selves know you not your own selves how that Jesus Christ is in you except you be reprobate if it wasn't for Jesus I'd know nothing what I know about spiritual things is because Jesus came and showed me he gave us his word we don't have to be ignorant we don't have to be confused. I'm not confused. I know where I stand. I know where I believe. And what I believe, I've studied it out. I stand on it. Jesus is coming. We don't need to delay his coming. Say, well, he's not coming yet. How do we know? Did he tell us? He could come any day now. I don't see anything has to be fulfilled before he comes. He said it'd be wickedness and there'd be signs everywhere, earthquakes and fires and catastrophes. Look at all the catastrophes around us. It's all over. We're seeing more things happen than we've ever seen in this generation. But the problem is the world is more wicked than it's ever been. The church is weaker than she's ever been. 
The church is a deterrent to this world. And the reason the world has so much power is because the church has so little power. They tried to handle the church in the, old, in the New Testament. They couldn't handle them. They were too hot to handle. They'd put them in a jailhouse and God would send an angel and burst the jailhouse open and they would get up. There was dead rays. There was miracles happen because the church had the authority. For the most part, the church is not uh, fulfilling the fullness of God according to the gifts of the Spirit and the power of God because the church is let down on her responsibility. All oh, some people want in a church is a big shouting time. I thank God for our shouting. It's real. But the word of God's important too. And there's people that don't want preaching in some of these churches. You know why? It's going to put the searchlight on them. You got to always examine yourself. Every day of my life, I got, oh my God. <laughs> I, I hear about preachers falling. I've never desired to go with another woman. I, I've been tempted by the devil like anybody else. I'm a man just like any other man is, but I have never desired to get me another woman because I've tried to stay close to, enough to God till that love for my wife is what I have. I'm not looking for somebody else. I'm not looking for another Jesus. I'm not looking for a new doctrine. I'm not looking for another way because in 1959, I found out what, what works. I've got sanctified. I've been baptized in the Holy Ghost. I've studied the word of God all my life. I've been through the book of Revelation maybe three different times in the 42 years almost that I've been here. I believe in pre-trib rapture, pre-millennial rapture. I believe in second advent at the end of tribulation. He's coming back as uh, Enoch said or, uh, with ten thousands of his saints to judge, execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and all the hard speeches that ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are murmurs, complainings, walking after their own lust uh, and they have divers lust in them. They're clouds without water. They're a tree without fruit. They have nothing to show. But thank God you met Jesus one day. He came into your life and it doesn't get old. It doesn't get stale. What I've got right now is more precious to me than when I was first introduced to it. What Jesus saved me from and brought me out of, it's more precious to me than it was before. Brother Zali here talked about when he's just a little young man, young, been a long time ago, he helped work in this church and helped put that balcony in up there. Done a lot of things around here. He said his mama told me, said, stay with that little preacher. <laughs> now she would stay, stay with that old preacher. <laughs> I've been a long time here. I've seen God. But I have more desire to see him now than ever have. <laughs> I was out here filling up the baptistry. And you know, have you ever prayed till you couldn't pray no more? You just... Told God everything you know to tell him. You just can't tell him anymore. You got to wait on him. You got to believe that his ears are open under your prayers. His eyes are over the righteous. He's, not, he's touched with a feeling of your infirmity. He knows where you are. He will not turn his back. You got to make up your mind. He heard me pray. I know he heard my prayer. I don't know that song. I, I, I don't know. I, maybe Sister Twyla knows it. She's been in Church of God about all of her life, and they sang all of them old choir songs. I love them. I love them. I don't like some of this new bang, bang music they got. And some people do, but personally, I don't care too much for it. I like the old time songs. They sang, I know he heard my prayer. I don't know the rest of the words. <laughs> But it's a song. My brother sings it all the time. I'd like for him to give me the words. What a message. We're living in a message. We're not living in make-believe. This is not a fairy tale. This is reality. Jesus died and rose again and ascended to heaven and he's coming back. He's coming after people full of the Holy Ghost and the power of Pentecost. He's not coming after a bunch of dead, worldly people that haven't come out from among the world and been separated. You love that. If you're sanctified, you love sanctification. Anybody that wants to argue with you over worldliness and put on all they can and keep all they can, they don't love God. 
They love the world. And you can't dress people up. God has to. You can judge them all you want to. Won't do them a bit of good. They got to get in that altar. Get a hold of something that'll make them want to lay aside every weight and the sin that that's easily beset them. And they're going to run hard with patience. The race that's set before looking unto Jesus, the author, my God, and the finisher of our faith. Motto, shut it up. It's harder to end the race. Listen to me. It's harder to end the race than it is to start it. Everybody's on the same. Don't be dismayed when you see all this rebellion. It's got to come to pass. I told you about it before it came. It's going to get worse. But I'm going to get brighter. As the darkness comes, I'll shine more with my church. Because my people will be sharpened. They'll get in. They'll press hard. And they'll get exactly what they need to have. Because I'm God. And I will help them, saith the Lord. Come on now. Lift up those hands. I'm just preaching off the cuff now. I've got a message. I'll preach it tonight, a message God gave me. I'm just telling what's in my heart. When a race starts, they're all even. Every one of them. They're waiting for that gun to sound. And they're all even. But as they run the race, they split up. The one that is last has the same advantage as the one that's first when it starts. But he that finishes... I got to finish. It'd be awful. Stand before God. He'd say, you didn't do this and you didn't do that. You let this go. You didn't preach this. You didn't visit this one. You did nothing to help anybody. I don't want that. I want to finish strong. When that man goes across that line, he got that ribbon stretched out. Turn. Most of the time, he's got his hands up when he comes through. And that ribbon breaks. He's suffered He's persevered. He's run hard. Probably along that race, he could have got tired and said, and the devil or whatever, there's probably spirit telling him in the natural here, now I'm speaking, you're not going to win. It's too far. It's too hard. You're not going to win, but there's something that says, I got to win. I got to get across the finish line. So the winner goes across that and that ribbon breaks. That's go, oh, ain't it going to be wonderful? When we cross the line, I can't imagine, I can't imagine how good it's going to be. I can't explain it. I can't paint a picture. No artist can paint a picture to exemplify that scene. No philosopher can tell a story that can explain it. But it's real. It's real. We're going over. We're going over. We're going to press on. We're going to live a whole of this life according to the dictates of the Bible, not man-made rules, but Scripture. We're going to hang in there, and we're going to keep on coming to church. We're going to keep on shouting the victory. You're going to keep on hearing preachers that will preach holiness and righteousness and purity. I don't want some compromiser preaching for me. We've got preachers that have big churches. I mean big churches and preaching doctrines that's contrary to the Bible. I'm not trying to build myself a name. I'm just trying to cross the line. My wife has been having problems with her ears and she can't hear good things are popping in her ears. She's uh, doing good. I'm not playing it down. God's brought her a long way, but she's having to take some medications under the care of a doctor and I think it's causing some of these problems. She can't sleep like she needs to and I've been praying for her and I've prayed and prayed and prayed and she's prayed and prayed and prayed. Well, now it's in God's hands. You can pray too far. Just pray and leave it there after you've prayed so much and say, now God, it's you or it's it's, it's ruined one of the other. You got to do something. You got to show up. He's never failed. He's never failed. I said, Jesus has never failed. 
And what we need to talk about now more than anything in the church is, is, is don't try to be some super duper whipper whopper preacher that understands everything about Revelation because I don't believe ever, any preacher on earth knows every little thing about Revelation. But I, I know for the most part enough to know what's in there. And I want to tell you, God had a plan. It's God's plan and he'll fulfill that plan. And preachers can't change that plan. I can't change it. I want to get with a plan. I don't want to hear something just because it sounds good. It may not sound good, but if it's truth, you better take it and eat it. You better take what God says. Live that book. Revelations is wonderful. If you can read it, understand it. To my knowing, the rapture takes place in Revelation chapter 4. If you want to argue that, that's you and God. I believe it's chapter 4. I believe the second advent is Revelation chapter 19. And between that, the church is gone and they're in heaven getting rewards and tribulations going on on this earth. Great tribulation like man's never known. Jesus is going to come back in wrath and he's going to straighten out the most horrible time man's ever known. God's not appointed the church to go through that. He's appointed Israel to go through that. That's a time of Jacob's trouble. The church is different than Israel. Israel is going through tribulation as a nation and they're going to be persecuted. The Antichrist is going to try to kill them, but he can't. They've been trying to drive them out of Jerusalem for years. They can't get them out of there. Why? God said in Amos, the last verse of chapter 9, I believe it is, the last verse in Amos, I'll plant them there and they'll never be pulled out. I don't care who tries it, they ain't going nowhere. They're going to be there, but they're going to be persecuted by Antichrist in the middle of the period. Great wrath's coming down. The last three and a half years will be great tribulation, but lesser tribulation. The first three and a half years will be seven years. Then after those seven years are completed, Jesus is going to get his church together. Come on, let's go, fellas. We're going on back down. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what they'll do with women there. No, no. We're going to all be the same. What we'll worry about sex. Come on. But we're all coming back. And he's not going to need us. We're just going to be there to witness what happens. He's just going to spit out this sword out of his mouth. It's coming out like a fire. And he's going to burn the devil's hide up. And he's going to lose. And then for a thousand years he'll be uh, on this earth. And then Jesus is going to grab the devil out of the pit and throw him in the lake of fire. Then there's going to be the last judgment. The great white throne judgment. That'll be the second resurrection. We're in the first the second resurrection will be the wicked dead. There'll be two different ones. In the book of um, 2 Timothy chapter 4, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who shall, the, shall judge the quick. Who's the quick? I'm going to close right now. Who's the quick? The saints and the dead. That's the sinners. At his appearing, that's the rapture. And his kingdom, that's the great white throne judgment just before he sets up his eternal kingdom. There's two different comings of the Lord there. Am I wrong? Don't say amen. <laughs> There's two different comings there. He talks about the dead. He talks about the quick. The quick, the living, us, the dead or the wicked. He's going to come and he's going to take the quick and he's going to give them eternal blessings with a glorified body. And he's going to take the, the, the devil and take care of him. I charge thee therefore before the Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing. He didn't say at his appearing one time. He said something else. And his kingdom. That's two different times. Now we can argue over when the rapture is going to take place. As I said, I believe I can prove it. It's in the first of tribulation, but we're not going to fuss over it. Did you hear me? We're not going to make enemies over it. That man, I didn't want to talk to him. You know why? You're wrong. Anybody tells me I'm wrong, I don't want to talk to him. No. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm going to close. Everybody stand. He said, you're wrong. I said, I don't, I'm not wrong. I don't believe like you do. And I love my dad to death. Like I said, if he didn't go to heaven, I'm going to lay down my Bible and I'm not going to preach another message because he lived good. He just couldn't see it. Well, I can see it and I'm glad I can. And I see what I see, and I can take scriptures, and I believe what I believe, and don't fall out with me. You got now. You you're looking at me a little bit funny now. We got a lot of people in Pentecost that believe there'll only be one appearing. It's been like that for years, all through the years. That's called post millennial, after millennial, the only one. But I believe in the rapture. I'm gonna meet him in the air. They're coming back the next time down to earth. The first time we're leaving earth. 
Now praise him for it. Lift up your hands and magnify God and say, Lord, whatever, I've got to be ready. I know you're going to come. When I don't know, nobody knows it. And anybody tries to tell you, they know when the Lord's coming, count them as a false prophet. They don't. One man wrote back in the 80s, so many reasons why the Lord is going to come a certain year. I believe 88, he said, He's, he didn't come. God didn't give him that. Because no man knoweth the day or the hour, but we know the signs. Anybody knows it can't be years. Somebody said, well, it might be 100 years. No, no, no. This earth can't stand many more years with the wickedness we've got going on. And if we don't have some deterrent, Donald Trump is a deterrent. He's not a Republican. He's not a Democrat. He's not a politician. God didn't choose a Democrat. He didn't choose a Republican because he gets tired of their line. So he's president, like him or not. Pray for him. Standing for good things. We believe in everything. We, now, he, he wasn't like that. He, that's really a lot of people didn't trust him. They said, well, when he becomes president, he'll change. He'll be just like the rest. He hadn't changed. Because, and you don't, if you disagree again, here, don't fall out with me. I believe God put him in for this time. There was nobody looking for it to happen. Well, God does things but surprise. <laughs> he don't call me up and ask me if he can do it. He does it anyhow. Now, I want us to get in this altar and just raise our hands for the next moment just standing down here. I want us to lift up our hands and thank God that we know the truth. Listen to me. Come on down here, everybody that will. Come on down. We're going to pray about three or four minutes. I'm going to let you go home. I just preach what God gave me in my heart this morning. I, I, I don't want to sound like I know it all. I don't want to have an argument in spirit. I'll just tell you the way I believe it if you don't agree with it. And you're going to get in that when you get in Revelation. You're going to get into disagreements. It's a hard book to understand. I don't know it all about it. I'm still learning. But I know enough to know what it's telling me. Now I want you to raise your hands and say, Oh God, keep me in the right place. Keep me in the right spirit. Keep me in your power and your love. Don't let me miss a rapture. I don't know when it's coming, Lord. But I do know one thing. I want to stand for truth. And I want to stand against worldliness and the rebellion of this nation that's coming against righteousness. The judges that are crooked and politicians that are evil. God, we're not interested in Republican Democrats. We're not interested in the race or anything we're interested in you we're all one at Calvary we're all one at the cross there's no big eyes and little you we're all God's people we're God's children and the Lord's gonna take us to heaven one day now raise your hands up and praise him with all your heart you have the responsibility of being submissive to the Word of God. If I'm giving you the Word, you have the responsibility. You want prayer? Church to pray for your granddaughter. Pray for your granddaughter. God knows what it is. Heart beat out of control. Let's believe it right now, Father. Whatever this is, I bind it. In the name of Jesus. Woo. You know what the Bible tells us is going to happen, sister. Look at me a minute. You know what the Bible tells us? Who's going to separate them? The Lord is going to separate the sheep from the goats. I'm glad I believe right. And I believe in a rapture. God bless that man, but I could I, the Spirit discerned through me that he just wanted to argue and he don't half know what he's talking about. He thinks he knows everything. Right there in the studio, right in front of the man, I, I, he come in and start blah, 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 blah. And I told him, I don't want to hear it. And he, well, yeah, yeah. I said, I didn't start this, you did. <laughs> I didn't say nothing about any rapture. You come in. He went to a church of God and he left the church because he taught the rapture separate from the second advent. There's two comings. Do you agree? Give the Lord a hand clap. Have a good lunch. Come back tonight early expecting God to move. May God bless you. I love you.